Hello, this is Mr. Leapforth, along with Jill. And uh, this is our last problem of the night here. We did it out of order, but we're doing question five from the 2012 AB Calculus AP exam, the free response section. Uh, my assumption is that you have the problem right in front of you and um, that you know that you can stop the video and pause or go back or do whatever you want to do. Grab your calculator. Oh, wait, this is the non calculator part of the exam. Um, but let's go ahead and get started. So I'm assuming you read through the problem already. Uh, question um, A says, um, if the is the bird gaining weight faster? Um, so we have a formula for dBdt. That's the change in something with respect to time. Oh, B is the weight. B of T is the weight, so it's the change in weight. So when it asks in A, is the bird gaining weight? You look at the change in weight, 40 grams. Um, I'm going to say dBdt equals one fifth, one hundred. What's B for us, Joe? Forty. Sorry, was I covering it up? Maybe I was covering it up. And then for the second one, the change in uh, weight with respect to time. You got one fifth. Same questions coming up in a sec. What is it for the second one? Seventy. And so my guess is that you guys can handle that. So this is sixty divided by five, which is. 30 divided by 5, which is? 12 and 6. 12 and 6. And usually on a calculus exam, um, you want to have some kind of units there. Um, but what is it really asking? Is the bird gaining weight faster at 40 grams? So here it's um, 12, and here it's 6. So we have um, D, B, D, T. Um, when, um, let's think when B is 40, and you have D, B, D, T when B is, what is it, 70, and so which one's bigger? I think 40 is bigger, because we all know that 12 is bigger than 6, remember the alligators getting the bigger number or something, you get anything like that? It's a pretty bad alligator, isn't it? At least let's make them green. Anyways, the, um, <laughs> the 40 one was 12, the other one was 6. And so um, we have that one, uh, which is bigger. And so the bird is gaining weight. The bird. That's my bird. Oh, no, that was a fish. Okay, all right. We better just write the bird is gaining weight um, at 40 grams, um, faster at 40 grams. So you want to write that out in the sentence, but we don't want to spend too much time on that for now because we're trying to keep the video down. Now, a lot of students will freak out in B when they see this. They're like, ah! I've never seen that before. It's frightening. Um, really, that's just a way to say um, kind of the second derivative. This is our way of saying like B double prime. Okay, and so that's what we want you to do there. So you have one fifth times a hundred, which I think is about twenty, and then negative one fifth B. You take the um, sorry, that's D B D T still. So I should take the lasso and grab it and bring this up higher. Um, because I want to take the derivative here, and you have 20, the derivative of 20 is 0, and the derivative of this is negative 1 fifth, but I don't have a clue what b is, so I need to say the derivative of b with respect to time. And so um, d squared b over dt squared, that thing that freaked you out, negative 1 fifth db dt, oh wait, I know db dt, that's up here. And so I can just plug in 1 fifth, times 100 minus b. And so we'll scroll down a little bit. I got d squared b over dt squared, that thing that freaked you out, and I got 1 25th. And then I got um, 100 minus b. I got so excited about doing my math, I forgot what I was trying to do with the problem. Um, oh, so it has a graph that looks like this and then this. And this is a graph of actual b because um, that's what it says. It says it's the weight. So we have a graph that is concave up like a cup, and then it is concave down like a frown. And so what we would want is we would want to have a second derivative of B double prime that's positive because it's concave up, and then um, a B double prime. I'm saying B, but writing it D double prime, that's negative because it's concave down. And so in our particular case, um, we know based on our dimensions that 
um, this 100 minus B is going to be positive. This is going to make it negative. And so this means we have a function um, that's supposed to be concave down um, on our interval. Um, and the interval, I think, was, what, we had like 20 um, to 100. It's concave down there. And so we have a little bit of the graph here, though, um, that's concave up. And so if that's concave up, um, that's going to be a problem because it doesn't match up with our logic. So you would write that out in a sentence. And so we took a quick second just to remind ourselves why it was 20. And earlier in the problem, uh, we kind of flew by it, but it said um, B at 0 is 20. And so I'm going to look at from 20 to 100. So, you know, we're saying on that, um, it's always going to be concave down. If you look at this piece, it's concave up, and those two things do not match up. So that's going to be problematic. Please expand that into a sentence, in a sentence, because you get a plus one for a good explanation, which I don't know if mine was. Um, let's go to C. Um, in part C, ooh, separable differentials. Well, that's cool. And remember that B at zero um, equals 20 is going to come back in. Again. So um, when I started it out a little bit, um, I just you know put it over 5 instead of times 1 fifth. I'm actually gonna, um, you know, actually flip flop these two is basically what I'm gonna do. Kind of fancy cross multiplication or whatever. Um, 100. And I got this as dt. I got one fifth. So some people need to pause that for like an hour and figure out what that was all about. Um, ah, I guess I'll show you. So it's five db when you cross multiply for lack of a better word, and you get 100 minus b times dt. Um, and then what I want to do is bring the B's over with the D's because you know the D's, they like the D's and so you got DB over 100 minus B how many B's can you say in one sentence and then DT over 5 um, another way to write that is 1 fifth DT so that's how I got to this beautiful thing over here um, and then this is when we integrate usually this is when I say something fun like I'll do the left hand side if you do the right or something like that but it's getting kind of late so I'll just do it it's natural log of the absolute value of 100 minus b um, and then you know I need to have a negative there um, I think when you're taking the derivative you'd multiply by a negative one and when you're taking the antiderivative you'd divide by a negative one but either way um, it says negative there um, and on the other side you got one fifth um, t and believe it or not, this plus C visit, visits us for, I think, the first and only time during this entire AP exam uh, for the free response section. That's crazy. Um, now, we know we're looking at 20 is less than or equal to B is less than 100 based on some information from earlier. So when you have this absolute value here and here, um, when we look at that, um, we know that that's going to be positive just based on the numbers we're using. So you can actually simplify it a little bit and just say 100 minus B, 150 plus C. We'll keep going here. Um, these are the things that you just have to play around with until they look like uh, what you want them to look like. Um, I think we want to try to do um, some solving. I'm not sure if we want to do it now or later, but let's just see what happens. B at 0 equals 20. We're trying to find the C value. Let's see what happens if we plug in 0, 20 right now. Um, natural log of 80. And then this is uh, 0 plus C. And so C seems to be um, the opposite of the natural log of 80. So I don't know if we like that or not. But um, we can go back. Um, let's see here. Make some space, but still be able to see everything. I'm going to go back.
e to the c power we all know is c, it's e to the negative 1 fifth t equals 100 minus b. What are we doing here? Okay, so now this might be easier or maybe I should go back to what I crossed out, but let's take a look. Um, we know that p at 0 is 20. So if you plug in 0 and you plug in 20, we get something nice. I like this a little better because the exponent here is 0, e to the 0 is 1, c times 1 is 80, and so we see that our c value is 80, so this seems a little cleaner. Uh, 1 fifth t equals 100 minus b. Um, so I'm trying to look at, you know, kind of what what the answer, what they would want the answer to look like. I, I think probably they want the b by itself. Um, so the 100 should come over, so 80 e to the negative 1 fifth t minus 100 equals negative b, and so b of t equals um, negative 80 e to the negative 1 fifth t plus 100. And I'm just going to glance over to see if that looks relatively familiar, and so that's for time greater than or equal to 0. So that was a long problem. It was a five point problem. You didn't have to get all the way to the end. Um, you got one point for separating the uh, variables. Um, you got one point for just writing that you were supposed to take the antiderivatives. A point for the uh, plus c. Um, a point for looking at the b at zero is 20. And a point for actually the solution. So along the way there's lots of places um, you know, where you could get a point. Um, if you don't have um, you know, plus C. If you didn't have the plus C, the most you could get was two points. Um, and if you didn't separate um, the variables from the beginning, um, I think you got zero points in the problem. So you got to be a little careful with that. But um, hopefully that made some sense. And uh, that's one that you'll probably have to look back at. But um, separable differentials is going to be part of the exam for sure. And that ends off um, question five.